Hello my spooky darlings, my name is Stephanie and welcome to my series on the ghost stories and spooky tales of Britain. This series is a brief and short look at some of the haunted places in Britain and the spooky ghost stories attached to them. Today we are going to talk about Charlton House. It is a historic house located in the London borough of Greenwich. It is a fine example of Jacobean architecture and it is a grade one listed building. It is known as the best preserved Jacobean house in Greater London. It has a great hall, a chapel, a state dining room, a saloon and a gallery. Many original features remain, including oak staircases, fireplaces and plasterwork ceilings. The house was built between 1607 and 1612 during the reign of King James I. It has a bit of a, a royal connection as it was built by the crown for Sir Adam Newton. Newton was Dean of Durham at the time and he was tutor to Henry who was the Prince of Wales and the son of King James I and the older brother of the future King Charles I. Their mother lived nearby at Greenwich Palace. Newton stopped being the prince's tutor in 1610 and in 1612 the prince sadly died almost as soon as the house was finished, at the age of just 18. In the garden is said to be the oldest mulberry tree in the country. It is thought to have been planted in 1608 on the orders of King James I. During World War I, the house was used as the Greenwich Red Cross Divisional Headquarters. They used to um, raise money for the war effort and they collected gifts and donations for the soldiers on the front line. Also during the First World War, the owners of the house opened their home up to the Red Cross um, to set up hospital wards. There were so many injured soldiers returning home, um, yeah, they were re returning home in their thousands and there was a shortage of suitable hospitals and facilities to care for all of them. The house was used as an auxiliary hospital until 1919. The chapel building was bombed during the Blitz and was rebuilt with whatever bricks they could get their hands on in the post-war period, so it is mismatched with the rest of the house. The house is actually now a community centre and it's also a wedding venue and much of the grounds are now parks. This house has a very long and varied history. As I mentioned, the house has also been a family home many times over and it has had many different people living within its walls and many of them have died there too. There have been plenty of paranormal reports made about this property and it is said to be very haunted. Sir William Langhorne bought the property in 1610 to be his family home and he lived there until his death in 1714. Sir William Langhorne, who was married twice, died without an heir, which he was very disappointed about as he was desperate for an heir to pass his fortune on to, his title, his lands, things like that. In the end, his estate passed to his nephew. It is said that he still haunts the mansion to this day, reluctant to believe that he died childless, and uh, apparently his spirit is um, a little bit randy and lustful, and it seems uh, that he is still on the search for a woman to um, help him produce an heir. He turns bedroom doorknobs, trying to get in I'm presuming. Some ladies have even reported having their bottoms pinched by unseen hands. During World War I, when the house was used as a hospital, the nurses would refuse to enter one particular room and that may or may not have uh, something to do with randy old Sir William Langhorne. As with many other haunted properties, this mansion has a grey lady that wanders around. Many people have reported very clearly seeing a full-bodied apparition. She is always seen carrying something. It seems to be a baby bundled up in blankets. Staff have often reported their belongings mysteriously disappearing and then finding their stuff later on in a completely different part of the house. The attic is very spooky. 
Most of the staff refuse to go in there alone as there is a very oppressive feeling as soon as they step inside. The sellers aren't much better and many staff also refuse to take one step down there. During restoration work, a mummified body of a baby was found within an old fireplace. No one knows the identity of this poor little baby, but some believe that it was the, the child of a servant who was either stillborn or killed by its parent. You can do ghost hunting sessions at Charlton House. Um, that sound very, very fun. I really need to do a ghost hunting thing this year. There's a few local ones, Oxford Prison does one. Um, so yeah, I definitely need to look into that. So that is the history and some of the ghostly activity reported at Charlton House. That William though, he's a bit of a naughty ghost, isn't he? I hope you enjoyed today's ghost stories. Just a little video, but you know, it's another interesting haunted place. Uh, which haunted place should I look into next? Let me know down in the comments if you have any suggestions. Remember, if you have uh, any of your own ghost stories that you would like me to read and share here on my channel, please email me. I will put my um, email address in the description and I would love to hear your stories and spooky encounters. For now, thank you so much for watching and I hope you will join me on my next video. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And until next time, stay spooky.